Fans throwing objects on stage has been happening for pretty much four decades. I had previously covered the time Sebastian Bach of Skid Row jumped into the audience during a concert after being hit in the head with a bottle. The link to that video is down below in the description box. But in today's video, we're going to talk about the appropriately titled Black and Blue Tour, which saw Blue Oyster Cult open for Black Sabbath in 1980. Stay tuned for the full story. The previous year original Black Sabbath frontman Ozzy Osbourne had departed the group and was replaced by Ronnie James Dio. By 1980 Black Sabbath was promoting Heaven and Hell, their first album with their new singer. Meanwhile Blue Oyster Cult was promoting Cultosaurus Erectus. During an October 9th show in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Blue Oyster Cult opened the show, taking to the stage around 8.20pm without any problems. According to the Milwaukee Journal newspaper, Blue Oyster Cult played a pretty good set that night. The problem started following the opener's performance when there was an hour wait until Black Sabbath took to the stage. The hour-long wait was part of every show of the tour since each band had elaborate stage setups that had to be constructed and then torn down. Other reports claim that Blue Oyster Cult played too long of a set, leaving a crowd of about 9,000 people restless. The fans soon grew impatient, but Black Sabbath was able to take to the stage and make it through two songs including Neon Knights and War Pigs. As the band was about to play their third song of the night, the lights dimmed and fans started to throw objects on stage including frisbees and bottles. One of the bottles would strike bassist Geezer Butler in the head, knocking him unconscious. The bassist would tell Maximum Inc. in 2007 that he didn't believe the act was malicious saying, it's all a big misunderstanding really. The lights were down first of all, so unless the fellow was some sort of incredible quarterback, I don't know how he could have hit me on purpose, but I was knocked out and the band was busy getting me off the stage into a hospital. When the lights came back up, there was no band on stage and of course the crowd freaked out he'd say. But in the same interview Butler would reveal that in the 1980s, venues had beefed up security from a decade prior, revealing people threw a lot of beer cans in the 70s. Once in San Francisco someone threw a huge iron cross on stage, it bounced up, cut three strings on my bass and the end of it poked me in the eye. Luckily, I didn't lose my sight or anything, but that was quite an incident he'd say. Now getting back to the concert in Milwaukee, after Butler was knocked unconscious, Ronnie James Dio told the crowd, we wanted to give a lot for you, but not our blood. If you don't want to enjoy it, then tough shit. The band's tour manager then took to the stage and told the crowd the bad news. Black Sabbath wants to play Milwaukee, but Black Sabbath doesn't appreciate being hit by unidentified flying objects. It's been a long time since 1776, so just cool out. The band won't be coming back on stage. The bass player is too hurt, they'd say. Now, according to the Milwaukee Sentinel, as the band left the stage, the crowd started chanting, We want Sabbath, we want Sabbath. By 11.15 p.m., the lights came on in the venue, and the fans seemingly destroyed everything in sight when they saw no band on stage. This included chairs, railings, garbage cans, which were also thrown on stage. The fans soon turned their attention to destroying the venue's windows and doors. And in addition to all the property damage, the crowds soon turned on each other and fistfights erupted. The police, who were outfitted with riot gear, showed up and emptied out the venue by 11.40 p.m. But the troublemakers continued their rampage into the streets. The scuffles continued on the streets outside of the arena for at least half an hour after trouble was quelled inside the building. Police were seen dragging youths by the hair and throwing them into the patrol wagons at red. At the end of the night, three officers were injured, one member of the Black Sabbath road crew was injured and over 160 people were arrested, half of them for drug related charges and the other half related to the riot. Geezer Butler for his part was taken to Mount Sinai Hospital, treated and released. Black Sabbath's production manager told the Sentinel that some fans even showed up to the hospital where Butler was and apologized on behalf of the city of Milwaukee. A total of $40,000 of damage was done to the arena and following the incident, the police chief called for a ban on rock concerts at the venue. The next big show happening at the venue was Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band on October 14th and it was allowed to proceed, but there was a beer ban in place. And according to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Neither band lasted long. The beer soon returned and among the bands that played the arena in 1981 were both ACDC and Van Halen. So that does it for today's video guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. And if you guys have future suggestions for different topics you'd like to see, be sure to fill out the Google form down below. Take care.